This video briefly covers the budget constraint faced by the consumer in terms of tool goods. While indifference curves show the bundles of the tool goods that the consumer prefers, the budget constraint shows the bundles the consumer can afford. This is the problem we will be solving. Suppose one good costs $2 and the other costs $5. The consumer has $100 of income. What are the possible combinations of the two goods that the consumer can afford? After deriving the budget constraint, we will analyze how it is impacted by changes in income and prices from both a mathematical and economic perspective. Before we begin deriving what the budget constraint would look like, we need to define some terms. Assume there are only two goods, good X and good Y. Let uppercase X represent the number of units of X purchased or consumed. Let uppercase Y represent the number of units of Y purchased or consumed. PX is the price of X, PY is the price of Y, and B is the budget or income available. The total amount of money we're going to spend is going to be split between good x and good y. px is the price of x multiplied by the number of x's we're going to be buying, which is uppercase x, plus the price of y times that by the total number of y units we're going to be buying. These two need to equal to our budget, which is a fixed amount that's provided. Therefore, our equation becomes price of x times uppercase x plus price of y times uppercase y equals b. If we rearrange this and solve for y, we get y is equal to negative px times uppercase x all over py plus b divided by py. We should be able to see from high school economics that this equation resembles y equals mx plus b m, which is a coefficient of x, in this case is negative px over py, and b, in our case, is uppercase b divided by py. Well, we know that m is the slope. It's the slope of this line, and in our case, it is negative px over py. Therefore, the small b represents the y-intercept. It is the value when x is zero. And if you look carefully, uppercase b over py is the maximum number of y units we can buy with b dollars. In other words, if we spent our entire money on y, then that is the quantity of y units we can purchase. Logically then, the x-intercept must resemble the same form, uppercase b over px, and this is the maximum number of x possible units from a given b dollars. Note, in terms of the slope, it is negative, so our line is going to be negative. Here is our budget line once again. You can see the intercepts are b over py and b over px. Now, all the bundles that are outside of our constraint are not affordable. Those bundles are too expensive based on our level of b, our level of the budget that we have. All the bundles that are inside of this line, the shaded area, these are within our constraint. These bundles are affordable to the consumer based on the prices and budget available. Now that we have derived the general budget constraint, let's use this knowledge to solve our original problem. Suppose we have two goods, X and Y. One of them, say X, is priced at $2, so PX is $2. The other good, good Y, is priced at $5, so PY is $5. We have a budget or income amount of $100. The question is, what are all the affordable combinations of good X and Y for this consumer? We can write this as an equation. $2, the price of X, multiplied by some number of X items, plus $5 multiplied by some number of Y items, must be equal to 100. To be precise, it has to really be equal to or less than 100. For our calculation though, we can just say it's equal to 100. Now let's put this equation on a graph, and since we want y on the vertical axis and x on the horizontal axis, we need to solve for y. Thinking in just pure mathematical terms, the x-intercept is when y equals 0, 
solving for x gives 50. The y-intercept is when x is 0, solving for y gives 20. In economic terms, this means the most number of x items the consumer can buy with $100 is 50 units, since the price of each is $2. The vertical intercept of 20 represents the most number of units of good Y the consumer can purchase with $100 since the price of each good is $5. In terms of slope, mathematically going from bundle A, which is 0 units of X and 20 units of Y, to bundle B, which is 50 units of X and 0 units of Y, requires reducing 20 units of Y in order to get 50 units of X. The slope, the change in y over change in x, is negative 2 over 5. What does a slope of negative 2 over 5 in this example mean in economic terms? We know from our previous work that the slope is the negative of price of x divided by price of y. In other words, it's the relative prices of x and y expressed in the ratio. It can be viewed as the number of units of y required to be given up hence the negative sign, in order to purchase one item of x. To answer the original question, all the affordable bundles are in the shaded green area. For example, the consumer could purchase 20 units of x and 10 units of y, but that would cost only $90. All the bundles on the budget line, however, will cost exactly Now let's consider what happens to the budget constraint, both mathematically and in terms of economics, when the income, or budget, is increased from $100 to $200. Assume that prices remain unchanged. So our equation becomes 2x plus 5y equals 200. Solving for y equals negative 2x over 5 plus 40. The x-intercept when y is 0 is 100, and the y-intercept when x is 0 is 40. Let's call this budget constraint number 2. Note how this compares to the original budget constraint. The slope has not changed. It is still negative 2 over 5. A parallel shift outwards of the original budget line occurs as a result of the increase in income. In economic terms, there are now more combinations affordable. The green area has increased. Note if income had decreased, then there would be a parallel shift inwards and the affordable combinations would reduce. Now let's assume the price of good x reduces from $2 to $1.50. No other changes. The equation becomes 1.5x plus 5y equals 100. Solving for y, we get minus 1.5x divided by 5 plus 20. We will not go through all the calculations again, but if you do the math, you will find the x-intercept to be 66.67 and the y-intercept to be 20. The slope is now lower at negative 0.3, which means the line is flatter. Compared to the original, this budget constraint pivots outwards along the x-axis. That should make sense because the reduction in price means that we can now purchase a maximum of 66.67 units of good x, whereas before, the most we could purchase with our $100 was 50 units of good x. Now let's assume the price of x reduces from $2 to $1.60, and the price of y reduces from $5 to $4. The budget remains at $100. The equation becomes 1.6x plus 4y equals 100. Solving for y, we get negative 1.6x divided by 4 plus 25. In this case, the x-intercept is 62.5, and the y-intercept is 25. The slope, however, has actually not changed. It's still negative 0.4. Similar to how income increases affect the budget line, here we also see a parallel shift outwards. This is because the price of x reduced by the same percentage as the price of good y. Therefore, the relative prices, which is the slope, did not change. There are now more affordable bundles as expected from the price reductions. Now let's assume the price of x reduces from $2 to $1.50 and the price of y reduces from $5 to $2. The budget remains at $100. The equation becomes 1.5x plus 2y equals 100 and y becomes negative 1.5x divided by 2 plus 50. 
Here the x-intercept is 66.67 and the y-intercept is 50. The slope is now negative 0.75, which means even more negative or more steeper. The relative price ratio has changed, hence the slope has changed. It's important to be aware of the economics behind the relative price ratio, Px over Py. If this is decreasing, it means x is becoming cheaper relative to y. If it increases, the opposite applies. This is a summary of the results.